Well, this episode promises to be a busy one and quite an interesting one too because we obviously have a lot of work to do on this Mustang, but potentially three other V8s as well. And we're going to pick up where we left off, which is trying to fit a new lock here. But of course we couldn't because there isn't a rod in there. And so come off the hour, come off the rod. Let's get into it. So I'm starting off here by removing the old lock. In order to do this, I had to use a set of pliers to grip the retainer clip and yank it out. Whew. That was a bit awkward. But with that out of the way, I can then pull the old lock out of the car door. And there we go, one piece out. Now, it doesn't have the black piece, um, the sort of black plastic piece to hold the new bit in. So I just need to have a think about how I can secure it because obviously I can't just go and get one piece. I can't go to Cambridgeshire for that. And well, to cut a long story short, I decided to order one and pay the shipping because as you can see in a second, the lock just didn't seem to be activating properly. The rod could move up and down okay, but it didn't unlock and lock the door as it's supposed to. And my theory is because we're missing that little plastic retainer. I did also notice that the lock was getting caught as well. And that brings me on to another point of another thing I bought, which is these locks. Um, we've only got one, which is on the driver's side, but I've got two fresh ones, so I'm gonna fit two new ones anyway and take the old one off the other one as well. Um, but yeah, get this on and then hopefully that lock should go up and down. These just screw straight onto the rod and then I could give it another go. Oh. Ooh. And to my disappointment, the issue remained. Well, can't seem to get that to work properly and I'm sure it probably is just because that retainer isn't there. Um, so yeah, gonna order a retainer now, found online from Mustang Maniac, six pounds plus that, plus probably then the postage. So I don't know, hopefully we'll get it later this week, but we'll see. For now though, I guess we might as well move on to the next task. But before moving on, I of course fit the new lock onto the driver's side as well. And aside from just doing that driver door lock, the next bit I mean is our mouldings here now. So it's still in the packaging. But I've been to Mustang Mania. I've had a swap around for the correct one. I did in fact have the coupe. I've now got the fastback mouldings. And I've also been speaking to Peter Cavallo about the best way to install these. So like I said, I've been speaking to Peter and his advice was actually, because it's a hollow underneath inside, was actually to fill in this bit underneath and then just use some double-sided sort of adhesive um, and just run it all the way along and then press it into position. He, he works on numerous Mustangs and that's what he does. And it's actually not a bad idea. Briefly just sort of um, put a bit of masking tape on just to kind of put it in line. And as you can see, we do have a bit of work with getting this lined up properly, especially on this side. It just doesn't seem to bend around enough. Now, these do come with these fixings but as is the case with a lot of these boots um, they don't have the correct holes for them and i think this one might have been filled in at some point behind here um, but there's actually nowhere to to sort of put these into it seems a little bit more like it now we actually seem to be following the curvature of the bonnet uh, of the boot sorry um, i've had to sort of use quite a bit of tape just to hold in position because this isn't natural these ends want to stick up a bit more same with that side but i've got it taped in position just to see that it will do it and sure enough it does and it does look a lot better now obviously i'm going to do this middle piece first and then the ends i can sort of stick on to match it just so we've got a nice even point up here as you can see it's about, about half a half a centimeter out there so obviously i can just lift that half a centimeter on this end piece and then a uh, similar tail over here i mean that's actually pretty good but yeah, basically the plan is to get this middle piece on first. I'm going to try my way first. If it doesn't work, it's no real loss. We can just restart. Um, and we're going to get this first piece on. Then after that, get these sides on over here and over here. So it was showtime. And before using any adhesive on the boot, it was of course wise to give it a quick clean down. With that done, I can then lay the adhesive onto the trim, which I'm on purposely cutting into smaller sections. I wanted to ensure that there was suitable runoff points for any water in the event of driving in the rain. The last thing we want, of course, is water getting stuck there and causing a lot of rust. In terms of applying the trim to the car, I started from the left and worked my way across. On the boot, there is a groove that I was able to follow to ensure I was putting the trim on in the correct spot. I run my thumb and index fingers along either side of the groove to make sure I got a nice straight application and I was pretty happy with the results. <laughs> Hoi! 
That looks all right. I'm happy with the way it looks. It's more gonna be a case of whether it will actually stand the test of weather and washing. Well, I'm gonna wash the car a bit later on this week, so we'll get the jet wash out and we'll give it a bit of a test then. If it passes that, well, to be honest, I think it'll be okay, but I wanna give it as much chance to set first as possible. But I'm actually pleasantly surprised with how that's looking. With the centerpiece now in position, I can use it to pinpoint where I want to add the side trim. So it looks nice and neat for any passers-by. I've seen the alignment out on other Mustangs and it looks dreadful. And so with those now fit, I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. I think it's time to get on to the suspension points. And now I'm not actually going to do it myself. I'm going to get it booked in with my mechanic to fit next week. He said they can do it. And yeah, it's just not something I want to mess up and it's not even normal suspension. And here it is, as you see, we've got new springs, we've got two new shocks and we've got two new lower control arms. But yeah, letting off the springs, etc., carefully, I just, I've never done it. I don't know how to do it. Whereas they have special equipment to do it. So yeah, it's going to get booked in for them to fit next week for me. He's just going to let me know a good day. Um, and in terms of the bodywork, I'm tempted to do it myself. Certainly the sort of sanding work and getting it prepped for paint and then get someone else to paint it. But I am waiting again on a quote from that just because I think this car could be worth really, really good money um, if I get it done right. And if I do it myself, it probably might not be as good. So I think it's worth investing just a little bit of money. Also being able to get invoices and receipts for the work done. And hopefully we'll get top dollar for this. But yeah so i guess that's that done for now and the second v8 is obviously the ferrari the battery it seems fine it seems to be holding its charge it's been connected for the last four days or so still recording 12.43 volts and it's pretty much stayed there uh, i've been speaking again with the mechanic they've got a feeling obviously having had this in there i might well basically i've somehow it's lost its sort of signal with the with the immobilizer and the key might be bad now. Well, new day and, well, I've actually got an Aston Martin DB11 out the front, so I've gone and collected that. It's kind of nice to be reunited with the car, but it is, hopefully, by the time this video comes out, it will have been sold. So that means we're on the Ferrari and we've still got this immobilizer issue. Now, what I've done is I've called Ferrari because what I've been told is there is a pin code that you can, so you can actually start the car without the key fob. I think it's just not recognizing the key anymore. So I need to get that reprogrammed, but, you should be able to start the car with the pin code. So I've called Ferrari up, given them the details, my VIN, Reg, and they've said, right, leave it with us for a couple of days and we'll see what we can dig up. So hopefully in a couple of days time, we will have the pin code and then we can actually get this car started. We can get the door on and we can get these last bits painted. And then, well, we're almost there. And that's because rather annoyingly, this driver airbag doesn't seem to be making any signal and it's coming up on the fault codes uh, on the scanner. So I'm actually just gonna take this out again. I need to disconnect the battery in a second, take this out and just check that it's connected properly. I'm pretty sure I did it right. Um, but if it is the case, we might actually have a faulty airbag. And in that case, I'll need to return it to Ferrari and get a new one. Um, but yeah, one way to find out about that. And there's also a fault code uh, on this one. Apparently the head airbag for some reason isn't getting signal either. So that's more likely that I've not plugged in properly. But this one, I'm pretty certain I did it. So I'm gonna disconnect it now and just have a quick look. And hopefully we can just rule it out. Thankfully it was the driver's airbag and not the passenger one as it can be released by taking out just two screws as opposed to a thousand and one. Okay, well welcome back. Go, both, both bolts are out. And all those look connected to me, wouldn't you say? And is it connected down here? Oops. There we go. <laughs> Maybe they're not connected very well. Okay, we'll just reconnect them and push them in such that they clicked. I mean, they're not easily coming out now like they just did. So let's give it another go. With the battery reconnected and the codes read, it was looking promising. Now it says absent, so that is a promising sign. So if I go back, still familiarizing myself with this. Clear fault code, yes. Read fault code. Ha ha, yes. What is she gone? So front passenger head airbag. First stage, open circuits. That's gonna be this one up here. 
So I might just have to check the connections on that, that might have dropped out. But that's good that we've managed to get another code cleared. So there's nothing actually wrong with the airbag. I must have just not connected it properly. So that's good. Um, but yeah, this immobilizer thing. Let me know what you think, because if I show you here just all the warnings that are coming up, well, firstly, it's, beep, it's flashing like a Christmas tree. Um, as you can see, we've got the immobilizer code down here. Doors open, but it was giving me all sorts of airbag system failure, manatino failure, electrical system failure, which would lead towards battery. Now I did go on to test the battery, which seemed fine. I even plugged the car up to a brand new battery and tried to jump it from the Mustang, but no luck. The issue has to be something else. This code of system not programmed, I think is the key though, and it's given me an idea which I'll get round to trying in the next episode. However, I'm also interested in hearing what you think the issue could be, so please let me know down in the comments below and we'll see how you get on. In the meantime, I decided to jack the car up and pull it forward so I could get the door on. I used a couple of old boxes to rest it onto at roughly the right height so I can get the bolts on. For the door, there's one quite large electrical connector, two main adjustable bolts, and one screw that connects the strap. <laughs> Come on. Just got this bit to do, I just need to go find what size head that is. But I've plugged in the electrical connector already, um, just because it was the only way to get it in place. Uh, but yeah, that's actually quite a result. Obviously you'll notice we jumped to the new day. I have spoken to Ferrari since. Um, I was on the phone with them this morning in the service center. They basically said um, the best thing is to disconnect the battery overnight leave it disconnected because they reckon that by keeping the key in the barrel it's somehow just frozen the, the ecu um so disconnect the battery leave it overnight reconnect it in the morning and then hopefully when i go around to switch it on leave it for 30 seconds um, and that should reset everything and everything should go out but yeah i guess we'll uh we'll see on that one i don't have my hopes up i mentioned about taking the immobilizer out taking it to them they said no we can't really do that um, it would need to be recovered to us, and that just already sounds pretty expensive. Right, so I've just been playing around for a bit, and we've got this nicely lined up down there. It closes no problem. I think this wing is what needs a bit of adjusting. It just needs to go down a little bit, um, and obviously in at the bottom. But that's actually quite easy to do down by that door. So happy with that. Yeah, I guess we can just move on. We're sort of running out of things to do. I've got this bonnet. I can't, well, it just doesn't seem to close. <sighs> this this piece obviously has been handmade. It needs to be over this way, but as you can see, I've got it set as far left as I can. Sorry, this bit. And then same with this side, as far to one side as I can, but I'll show you how that closes. It's actually just out. So yeah, that's also causing me a bit of a headache at the minute. So yeah. Immobilizer and bonnet, they seem to be two main issues we've got now. But aside from that, we're not a million miles off. Um, like I say, I'm gonna paint it myself, which it might well need redoing, it might, but I just want this to be done for August. I wanna be able to enjoy it for what's left of summer, take it abroad, and then in the off, off months, in the winter months, we can get it redone if needed. So that's sort of the plan, and I guess it'll be good content anyway. I mean, not many people, Choose our second car they're spraying as a Ferrari, especially after the results of the first one, if any of you remember, um, dark days. But yeah, that's the plan. Well, the only other thought I've had, I've tried pushing this, I'd say it's far over one way and the bonnet is far over the other. But if you remember, we weren't also lining up with the trim that's gonna go over the air duct and the battery. So what I think I might do is obviously take the bumper off, I need to anyway for painting it. Um, and then we're just gonna actually see whether I can move the, on the move the actual crash bar along uh, obviously inside there it's on some screws i might be able to loosen them off a bit and just bring it along a bit and that might be the key to it all then we might find the trim might actually fit so it might all be to do with that but yeah i guess we'll just see but you're gonna have to wait for the next episode for me to do that because well i've got quite a few things to do this db11 as you guys I'm familiar with is uh, due to be sold tomorrow, it's supposedly, as long as the guy doesn't mess me around. Um, that's due to go and all this racking as well. So I've got to start getting ready for that. But anyway, hope you've enjoyed a slightly different episode where we're not focusing on one car, but focusing on a couple. Um, I just don't have enough to do on one car, if that makes sense. But yeah, hopefully soon DB11 will be gone and we'll be able to get a new project. But I'll probably wait until we're, I'm in my new house. So 
yeah, hopefully that shouldn't be too long either. But anyway, thanks for watching as ever. Love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.